obviously your head coach and the coaching right. staff, there's all Auburn guys played with him at Auburn and all that type of stuff. How hard was it for it you was, to sit there and turn that down and actually stay back? And how hard was OU in your ear saying, don't take that visit, yeah, don't take that right. visit? Yeah, right. It was hard both ways because, you know, Coach Jarrett McIntyre and then Coach Darius, Coach Dontarius Thomas played my linebacker coach. Coach Dontarius Thomas, he played linebacker with Coach Cadillac and then as well as Coach Jarrett McIntyre, he played receiver. So it was kind of hard. They were telling me about their experiences and stuff like that, just the Auburn family, how everything went when they went down there. Like when they played for the Auburn people or whatever, and um, they weren't on me too hard because they understood. Like they understood. Like it was my decision, my um, my my process, my recruitment process. So they weren't on me too hard about it. Oklahoma is in my ear heavy. Just about um, staying loyal to the people and be big on really the commitment I made to them. Outside of the coaching staff, mm -hmm. some of the people, whether it be peers, support staff random figures, whoever it might be hanging around in the Oklahoma circle that you've been able to develop the best relationship with? Uh, really some of the players like Sammy, the linebacker. I talked to him a good amount. And um, he might end up my roommate, really. Yeah. But, yeah, it's not, not many people, but I talked to people here and there. I talked to um, Jackson Arnold a little bit. Right, like before I committed, I talked to him as well. And, um, not many people, just mainly the coaching staff. And some of the players as well when I went down there on my official visit. You, That's there at OU now. You brought up Jackson, um, the fact that he's one of the top and arguably some people think he is. He's right. on the staff that so you talked to, yeah. the top quarterback in the class. All right. How much did that sway your decision knowing that you have somebody on the opposite side of the ball yeah. that basically is the main position right. uh, that is that big of a figure yeah. in the class? How much did that play into your, not just your making the decision to go to Oklahoma, but to, to stick with it? That that meant that meant a lot to me because I gotta have somebody on the opposite side of the ball that's leading the offense that I can be able to trust and be able to like really play up on there. We can just talk and he will be able to take criticism and stuff like that. We just all gotta be able to work together on the offense and defense side of the ball. When you look at the rest of the class that you guys that Oklahoma signed here, obviously with yourself headlining PJ and Peyton, does it just excite you about what yes. this defense could be very very soon? Right, right. The defense can be dangerous. And I feel like next year going to be the year where we put all the pieces together, we see what we got, and then from that, time to tough. What was your reaction when Peyton Bowen put that up? That, that was big. That was big to me because it was like a last little piece that we really needed. And he can be, like he was really like the icing on top of everything. You, like he kind of set the deal, basically. Do you feel like, um, I mean, did you have a good sense that – that's where he was leaning was to Oklahoma. Even after he put I kinda, the hat, did you kind of get a sense I kind of felt it a little bit. Like, it was like a little bit. I just had like a little bit of feeling down inside. Well, I'm like, we still got a chance. Like, we still can get this man. And after he committed, it was just like, it was like relieved. I was relieved. Yeah, it was relieving. <laughs> were all y'all pushing him behind the scenes? Like, yeah, we were. Yeah, we were. We were. Yes, sir. You mentioned the word trust. And you just mentioned the word relieved. Those two things don't always go together. Right, right. What's that, been, what's that like for a young person like yourself, 18 years old, to trust the coaches that you're just meeting, they're trying to impress upon you how they feel and what the culture is going to be and all the sales pitches? you got to trust them. Right. Cause it, me it? Yeah, it means a lot to me because it's going to be days I get homesick, days I'm not feeling well, and it's going to come down to the people I'm around, the people I surround myself with and keep me going and stuff like that. When I'm not on my best days, it's going be, to come down to the people I'm around. Where do they have you playing? Like, are you a cheetah or are you? Uh, every time I ask Coach Roof, he'd be like, you can play any any one of them. But I'll probably end up like the cheetah, like the hybrid backer mm -hmm. slash safety. But it don't matter as long as I'm on that defense, I'd be all right. Yeah. Yeah. What does getting the chance to play in the SEC mean for you? Kind of it, a combination of Oklahoma and the SEC, a little bit better. Yeah, football, so. it means a lot because I'm going to have um, one year up under my belt of playing in the um, Big 12, and then we'll be moving to the SEC. I feel like we got a, we got a great chance of um, great chance of dominating. The SEC, uh, with the class we're bringing in now. Do you, uh, do you hear on the recruiting trail? We're talking about the recruits, mm -hmm. other commits even. Do you hear from them about, hey, I'm, I'm committed to the SEC here? You know, fun little trash talk. Stuff. Some, some, sometimes, not really. I used to get that a lot before I committed. Coach used to be trying to get in your ear like you're an SEC player and all that stuff. Coach tried to get in your ear and say that, but um, really not committed to the school. And that was that's a good thing that we're going to the SEC. I feel like. And I have one year up under my belt in the Big 12, so I'll be able to 
develop myself, better myself, and get ready for the SEC. Yeah, knowing that the SEC puts so many guys in the NFL, how right. feeling is that as well? Uh, that's that's big. That's big. That's why, like I said, it's like a good thing we're going from the Big 12 to the um to SEC. Cause I was kind of throughout my recruitment process, I was looking into the SEC and all the players they put into the league and stuff like that. Did you? Uh, I guess you said one year in the SEC. Is that something like when you're around other guys from Tampa? Are you? Working them, saying, "Hey, man, come to Oklahoma. You're going to be playing here anyways. I mean, in the state against, you know, Florida, and you're going to be down there in Georgia, Auburn, Alabama. So you're going to be close to home, anyways. A lot of away games. Is that right. something like maybe for? I'm trying to think of the running back's name off the top of my head. In Tampa. Stacy. Stacy Gage. There you yeah. go. He kind of, you know, that's his hometown. He's from Oklahoma, so he asked he asked me a couple of questions about the reason not committed and stuff like that. So he, I feel like OU one of his top schools. He looking at, you know, I'm gonna stay in his ear about it, and I'm gonna keep it real with him too. I ain't gonna sugarcoat it. It's kind of the same deal with Eddie, isn't it? Yeah, Eddie big Eddie, started. yes, yeah. yes, because that was Eddie growing up. That was Eddie's dream school. So like OU is kind of big for him. He, look, I think he's going down there in January, the end of this month, in the next month, he should be going down to OU visiting. It's a big junior All right, all right, yeah, that's what he's going to, yeah. But yeah, obviously, and you're an early in early, correct? No, I'm, not, I'm yeah, leaving in May. In May? Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. I'm on I mean, private school. Yeah, school. private school, yeah, yeah. right. Are you going to make a trip back to Oklahoma? Uh, you, you not, a for, not as far as now. Not as far as now. Okay. I'm not. Nah. What was it like? What, how difficult was it or tough to swallow or whatever to watch the team that you committed to go 6 and 6 this season? It was. It was, it was tough, but not as not not really tough because I kind of knew the class we have coming in now, and like the players that were took from Oklahoma, it was like kind of a big loss. So this year was kind of like the rebuild year, and next year is also like a rebuild year. You see what we got, see what we working with. What's your, I mean, what would your message be to fans, members of Sooner Nation, who are a little bit apprehensive, a little bit alarmed about how this season went? Like, what's your message going forward? Really, really, just stay low and time will tell. Time will tell, cause we, we got a great class coming in. Just, just believe, just believe. What does it say about the staff or Coach Venables that he was able to get this first class right. while going six and six? You said what? What, what does that say, say about the staff? Yeah, what does it say about his staff or Coach Venables? That's big. Culture or whatever? That's big. It's great people there, and you can tell it's great people because we got like a, a lot of new guys coming in and stuff like that. Big, big recruits coming in, and yeah, they got me. So. It means a lot. That means a lot about them guys. They're great people, genuine, and they just care about you a lot down there. Who was your host? My host, my host was um, David. Number two. Yep. Yeah. yeah. What's he like? He a great person. He was keeping it real with me and all that stuff. Like the whole time I was with him, he was just keeping it real. He was genuine as well. I wasn't trying to sugarcoat anything with him. He was like, man, if this is the place you want to be, to make that move. And he was just telling me about his experience there, his development throughout all the years he'd been there too. So do you feel, I guess at this point, you said you're relieved, you're comfortable, mm -hmm. you're signed. All right. So what's what's the next steps for Lewis Carter now that you're the done next. with football? Yeah. You know I mean? what, what, what's your goals, what's your aspirations, what's your plan between now and the time you show up at the end of May? Really? I'm just trying to get bigger, stronger, faster. So I'll be able to play, get out there and play. And, um, Really, just develop myself to be able to come to become the top player I want to become. So that, that's really it. I'm curious about your huddle business. Have you sent flowers to the family of that hunter? <laughs> <laughs> you talking about my junior year? Yeah. Uh, I gave him a concussion. I ain't even know. Yeah, I gave him a concussion. I ain't even know. He told me after the game that I gave him a concussion. He sent me a message, but it was just like I was just running. Yeah. I ain't really mean to do him like too bad, cause I kind of, I kind of slowed down a little bit. Right. Yeah, but like when I went through him, he just like flew back, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> cause at the end I threw my hands up a little bit. Yeah. I was kind of blue. No apologies made, when he told you. Right. Nah, nah. I ain't say nothing to him. Dude, you in the field? <laughs> you in the field?